Best practice is a phrase that trips off the tongues of the unthinking. A plausible sounding idea. We should be interested in who is doing things best. We could learn from them. If we all work to become as good as the best, things would be great. Oh really? Whitehall loves the idea of best practice. Ministers set up a beacon scheme. A beacon is, obviously, someone who's going to show us the way. Whitehall people think that if we trot along to see what the beacons are doing, then we'd all be inspired to copy their ideas and become like them. A local council in the North West was awarded beacon status. Aside from that accolade, it had received rave reviews from the Audit Commission inspectors because it had a call centre where 85% of people's calls were handled one stop, meaning citizens didn't have to do anything further to solve their problems. But when they studied their call centre using the Vanguard method, it quickly became apparent that their operational definition of one stop was we can't do anything more with it. When they took a citizen's view of one stop, they learned that the truth was about 5%. The executive was so shocked, he had to go and lie down. A local council in the West Midlands outsourced its call centre to a private sector supplier. The call centre won an industry award for best practice. Industrial tourists were impressed with the shiny new desks, up-to-date telephone equipment and customer relationship management system. They were shown how the call centre met its service standards. Phones were picked up in only three rings. And all the happy, smiling people answering calls had been trained in customer care. But when they studied what was going on, they discovered more than 80% of the demand into the call centre was failure demand. As the contract with the private sector provider was based on transaction volumes, the private sector provider was making hay, while services to citizens were clearly not working very well. The customer relationship management system only served to institutionalise the failure demand. Managers thought the CRM system was useful as it could tell you which citizens phoned in a lot. They soon realised it said more about their service failures than their citizens. An academic conducted research into the Whitehall Beacon programme. She asked people who went to visit the beacons if they thought it was a good idea to be industrial tourists. Then she asked people who received these visitors, those who'd been awarded beacon status, if they thought having visitors was a good idea. Everyone said yes. Well, blow me down. Is this academic research? Of course not. But if you want to be the poster child for public sector improvement, clearly it pays to shower praise on ministers' ideas. However dumb. Some questions we should consider. Who awards the beacon or best practice status? Is it actually best? And does the whole idea of best practice actually lead to innovation? Make no bones about it. The copious industry best practice awards are designed to keep the awards businesses going. No awards, no award ceremonies. No award ceremonies, no revenue. Many industry awards programmes amount to no more than Buggins' turn. You'll notice how regularly the sponsors win awards and, of course, you'll notice how the service companies you hate to deal with are given awards for, apparently, being great. In the public sector, best was often determined by the Audit Commission, a wrong-headed bunch of conventional management thinkers who bullied people to comply with their ideas about best. The role for determining bests now falls to the great and good in the various institutions of state. But just like the Audit Commission, their ideas about best are often anything but. Take, for example, housing repairs. Best practice means the repair organisations use PDAs, personal digital assistants, to give work to tradesmen. Best practice also means they use the schedule of rates to control costs and work to targets for repair types to mention just three features of what the great and the good consider as being best. This takes us to the second question. Are these features really best? Well, as everybody who's studied and redesigned repairs will tell you, they're positively bonkers things to have. They drive up costs and worsen service. They simply don't exist in repair services that deliver repairs to tenants on the day and at the time tenants want at much lower costs. So, people's ideas of best practice 
can actually cement in bad practice. Deming called this copying without knowledge. In the public sector it's been even worse than Deming described. It's been slavish copying of bad ideas, because that's what gets you ticks in boxes. But what about the people who run amazing repair services, setting economic benchmarks? Did they learn how to do that by visiting others? Of course not. Think about it. It's impossible to create an economic benchmark by copying others. An obvious truth that escapes the best practice brigade. But what did they do? They got to where they are by studying their own system. Taichi Ono was adamant. If you go visiting others to get ideas for improvement, you're looking in the wrong place. Everything you need to know to improve your system is in your own system. You just need to learn how to look. Ono also said that best is not a great concept. Best is a static concept. He said we should reject the word best and instead always think better. Better is dynamic. A more useful lodestar for anything, however brilliant, can always be improved. At best, best practice is a fast route to mediocrity. At worst, best practice is a means to widespread suboptimization.